discuss with you in briefly the possible clinical benefits of monitoring capnography during non-invasive ventilation. Uh, despite being of extreme clinical interest with potential uh, implication on patient safety, uh, the measurement of CO2 in the exhaled gas during NPPV is extremely difficult with the actual technology as the ventilators actively dilute the expired gas, so they dilute the expired CO2. There are several studies showing how unreliable is the measurement of entitled CO2 during NPPV. This is just the last one published uh, one year ago by Usunai and co-worker who compared in a large group of critical ill patient entitled CO2 and PaCO2 in terms of correlation and in, uh, as agreement with the Blande Altman and uh, they showed a modest correlation and the Blande Altman uh, um, technique did not confirm a good agreement between the two measurements. This is just the last paper but there are a huge, a huge series let's say. So to overcome this limitation, um, a miniaturized mainstream capnometer, very light, just four grams, has been uh, designed by uh, Nikon Coden, called CAP1, and this is expressly designed to monitor CO2 during non-invasive ventilation. This CO2 measurement cell is coupled with a specific nasal mask that we will discuss described more in details in the next slides, that is provided with an inner cap that is expressly designed to drive, to drive the CO2-rich exhaled gases to the capnometer cell, thus preventing this dilution effect. Uh, in a first, uh, in a pilot uh, bench study, the performance of the NPPV CAP1 mask system has been compared with the conventional mainstream airway adapter system. And this is the paper, the first paper for the bench comparison between the new system and the, uh, and the classic uh, mainstream airway adapter system. You, uh, this pub paper was published by Matsubara and co-worker in IEEE a couple of years ago. You can see uh, from the left to the right the uh, external uh, mm, uh, appearance of the uh, oronasal mask. It seems a standard oronasal mask with its fixation system, but inside there is an inner cap that uh, drive the exhale gas through the uh, evaluation cell. And on the right side of the slide, you can see uh, the classic uh, uh, mainstream airway adapter system that was used co for comparison. Here, you, it's a little bit easier to understand the technology used. It's a sec cross-sectional view of the mask. And as you can see, the inner cap covers the mouth and the nose, and the, both the nostrils. So uh, there is no possibility that the expired gas doesn't enter into the cell, uh, the uh, measurement cell. And as you can see in this enlarged view, uh, the uh, f free uh, CO2, the CO2 free fresh gases coming from the ventilator to compensate uh, uh, for, for PEEP compensation or to compensate leaks never mix with the expired gas from the patient. So the problem of dilution is apparently solved. And he, here you can see another enlarged view of the CAP1 and CO2 measurement cell. Uh, as you can see it's extremely light. It is important to note that the CO2 measurement cell is embedded in the mask. So all the problems related to disposition of, uh, uh, of, the, of the CO2 measurement cell are apparently solved. This is the breathing bench model that was designed for this uh, pilot bench study. It was made by a head mannequin provided with uh, mouth and nostrils with NPPV CAP1 uh, mask. Uh, ventilated by NKV330 ventilator driven by an ISL5000 active lung simulator that receive a continuous measured flow of CO2 through a mass flow controller. In the system there were so two capnometer, one for reference positioned between the ISL5000 lung simulator and the mannequin and the other connected to the uh, NPPV CAP1 mask. 
and these are the simulation patterns that were used during the study. The orders uh, used three different clinical factors, rep one representing COPD, another represented ARDS, and another patient with normal lung mechanics with appropriate expiratory time constant and respiratory rate. For all the measurements, two levels of, of EPAP were adopted, 4 and 8 cm of water, and IPAP ranging from 13 to 18 cm of water in order to obtain, set in order to obtain a tidal volume between 250 and 300 milliliters. And these are the main results. You can see the capnograms in the upper part of the slide obtained with the NPPV CAP1 mask, uh, respectively, through nasal respiration and through oral respiration. Nasal and oral respiration were obtained by plugging the nostrils or the mouth, respectively. In the lower part of the slide, you can see the data the, capno the capnograms obtained uh, using a standard airway adapter. And as you can easily see, uh, with the NPPV CAP1 mask, it was possible both during nasal respiration and during oral respiration to obtain reliable capnograms. Conversely, with the standard uh, airway adapter, an important dilution effect was always present, and you, as you can see, the the cap the cap program were absolutely not reliable. So the conclusion of this first bench, stu uh, bench study were that cap the CAP1 mask is able to guide the exhaled gas to the CO2 made measurement cell through this inner cap thus preventing dilution. And the cap capnogram obtained with the CAP1 mask technology is stable and as is absolutely re reliable. Conversely, the one obtained from the uh, conventional uh, airway adapter system is unreliable. But this was only a bench study, so requiring cl a clinical application study. Few weeks ago, in the Journal of Intensive Care, a uh, Sakurai and co-worker from Hiroshima uh, General Hospital published this paper entitled Accuracy Evaluation of Mainstream and Sidestream and Tidal CO2 monitoring during non-invasive ventilation. And we, this was a randomized cross, crossover trial. The aim of this study was to evaluate the correlation and the agreement between PaCO2 and anti-DO CO2 during NIV, comparing mainstream capnography using the CAP1 uh, system face mask that I already I just uh, described, provided with the inner cap to drive the CO2-rich exhaled gas to the uh, cap to the cell measurement cell, and this was called new method, versus uh, conventional side stream, in this case capnography, uh, through nasal prongs and oral scoop, and this was defined as previous method. 60 patients were enrolled, all being considered at high risk for intubation, and therefore all treated with non-invasive ventilation with an NKV 330 ventilator. Here you can see a schematic representation of the protocol. 60 patients were included. They were randomized to, re to, to start the, the study by receiving the previous or the novel method for CO2, entitled CO2 and capnography monitoring. After a time span ranging from half an hour to an hour, they underwent blood gas analysis and they were switched to the other uh, to that uh, measurement technique. Again, after a uh, time span ranging between half an hour and uh, one hour, they underwent blood gas analysis. Of note, all those patients that during intubation, during the uh, spontaneous breathing, breathing trial, just before intuba uh, extubation, sorry, showed a difference between entitled CO2 and PaCO2 measured than five millimeter mercury were excluded from the study. And these are the results, as you can see in the upper part on your left. These are the data, the correlation between PaCO2 and entitled CO2 during the spontaneous breathing trial, so do with the patient spontaneously breathing through the tube. As you can see, the correlation was very good, as was absolutely very good, I would say super possible, when PaCO2 and PaNTitled CO2 were compared with a new method, but not with the old method with side stream capnography. Not at all, as you can see. Even more striking 
the results of the blended outcome analysis showed a good agreement during the spontaneous breathing trial with intubated patient that was remained very good with the new method, but a bad agreement when comparing with the previous method. So the conclusion and take home messages of, of this second study were that the new technology with the CAP1 face mask is superior, absolutely largely superior to the previous method for PACO2 prediction in the population of patients being at risk of reintubation and post-extubation respiratory failure treated with NIV, and that the continuous monitoring of entitled CO2 together with SAO2 monitoring can allow the early recognition of respiratory failure and need for reintubation, potentially increasing patient safety. However, this is not uh, the only clinical situation in which this technology can have an interesting application. I just uh, rapidly found the uh, other four. So the first is what I just described, post-extubation phase in patients at high risk for intubation, but also to rapidly detect partial NIV interface dislocation. For the early detection of hyperventilation or hyperventilation phenomenon, for those patients who need an algo sedative, an algo sedation to increase NIV tolerance and are therefore prone to the analgo sedative effects both on respiratory drive and on respiratory timing, and for the early detection of the response to ventilator acting modifications. Thank you for your attention.